Our sport where you play multiple matches in a day and then you got to reboot and play the next day, especially early. So they had moved the match from 7 p.m. to 4 o'clock uh, because uh, Florida football was playing at Kentucky, so they wanted to play before the match. So not a lot of time for the girls to turn around and get ready. But um, obviously a big win. You know, I, as I've said to people uh, before, we've been here 18 months. Um, I don't I don't fully understand the Purdue thing, the Kentucky thing. I know that my phone was on fire yesterday and people were really excited about about the win. Um, so we're happy. I just think part of our part of our conversation today with the team is going to be about our goal is to try to beat Kentucky's in week 15, 16, towards the end of the year, not in week three. I mean, there's a lot of season left. I think it's a huge mistake to get too confident uh, too early. We got a lot of stuff to get better at, and uh, you can attest to that as well. I think we, we've we got a long way to go, but obviously fortunate for the win. I'm really proud of the kids. They worked really hard all week. We're still battling injuries. Uh, Haley Armstrong wasn't available. Kendall Bierman pretty much wasn't av available for the Kentucky game. So when they get healthy and get ready to go, I think we're even better. Um, and eight and two, we'll take it off to Tampa this weekend uh, to play in more meaningful matches to try to get to that target of around 10 wins going into conference. And, uh, so certainly a, a happy Sunday, happy Monday so far, but work to do. Coach, we talked so much about building this program and, and the fact that there's a huge rival is, is a cherry on top of thing. But being a ranked team on the road, what does this do for your program? Well, I think it means a couple things. I think, one, it means that we've got a high end in us that we can play with some pretty good teams. Um, I don't think that we've arrived. I don't think we're a top 25 team. I think we're, we're working towards that. Um, I also think it says something to the young kids in the state that we've been talking to and, and some of the young recruits around the country. We want this to be a destination place to play. You know, they've invested in the program heavily. I think the kids are having a great experience and, and we want the top recruits in the country to take a good look. And when you have wins like that, I think there's some validity to what we do and, and how we do it. Uh, we've been able to attract incredible young athletes, Emily being one of them, and I think we're gonna continue to do so. But it was a huge step forward for the program uh, nationally uh, to let people know that we can kind of compete on that level. What does it say about your team to go down in that circumstance, a rival on the road in a hot box, uh, that obviously was Memorial Coliseum with no air conditioning, but they persevered to come through that. What's to say about the, the middle out? Well, we, t we talk about a couple things with the program all the time. We talk about gratitude, just that it's, it's fun to be able to do what we do. Uh, we talk about grit, you know, uh, the ability to do hard things and, and go look for the fight a little bit. I think it's easier to not play the top teams and maybe dodge some people, but we want to play the top teams. We want to see what we, we have going on and what we're made of early in the year. So it's exciting. I think I think there'll be when teams win and there's stuff you got to work on. Uh, their ears are open, you know. So I think this week of practice will be challenging and hard. And um, but I think they're excited for it. After that third set against Kentucky, I mean, what was said in the in the huddle? Bounce back and win for the fifth set against a team like that. A lot of things that I can't share, <laughs> <Yeah>. probably publicly. <laughs> um, it's a good thing the team kind of knows me and we've got a good relationship because at times. You know, I'm an emotional cat, but it's because I, I care and there's passion to it. And I think they know that it's um, game three, Kentucky looked like it looked like a volleyball video, you know, like a coaching video of how to do things perfectly. They were fantastic. And the one thing about our sport instead of basketball and football, it's, you know, if, if you get run in a game, game's over, it's terminal and you play another one and the score is zero zero. So I think the best thing we did is we didn't quit. Uh, we didn't pout. We just said, hey, they're a really good team. I think that, I think they're a team that's going to end up being winning the SEC final four good. I said that going into it. They didn't play their best match, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure they'd want it back, but at the end of the day, they're they're exceptional. They're gonna have a great year. Emily, if you go off of that, against Oklahoma, you guys went up 2-1 in that fourth set, mm -hmm. which is kind of like Kentucky's third set. I mean, mm -hmm. what changed from, from just that week to be able to, to bounce back and then win those next two? I think it motivated us to keep getting 1% better every single day in practice and leading up to the Kentucky match. And just stay positive and keep working as a team. Coach said, just keep working. You talked about you don't really know the Purdue or Kentucky thing at all. I mean, did you at least have a surface level understanding of Kentucky thing where you weren't surprised or were you surprised by your fumbles? Uh, not really with Kentucky. You know, I didn't understand that enough. And I'm, I'm just, if you know me to be anything, it's authentic, right? I'm just telling you the truth. I, I didn't know about it. Purdue, I understand. I understand the history. I understand all the stuff, the geography. Um, and I understand it's a big deal. I, I spend none of my time thinking about Purdue. I'm sure, you know, they do what they do and that's great. Um, Kentucky, um, their volleyball program, much like Purdue's, have been great. You know, I think we, we spend a lot of our time worrying about us and trying to get better and we, we don't talk about other programs. We don't worry about other programs. It's certainly not stuff that 
uh, we spent a lot of time thinking of, uh, other than the fact I know that they're good. And uh, they've done a tremendous job, and I've got a ton of respect for both. But, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people uh, in this state that have some strong feelings about a variety of things that I've uh, not yet to fully understand. And maybe that's a blessing, maybe it's a curse, but it's the truth. At the second home weekend, you mentioned that you know, things the team was as good as you wanted them to be and where you wanted to be big picture. Do you feel like this past weekend they kind of were close for that? I think so, but, we, you know, Kendall... Kendall, we got to get back in the mix because she's just coming back from the double knee thing. Uh, Haley Armstrong played libero for us and they got concussed in the Oklahoma game. And so she's coming back slowly, but we're do doing what's right by her. So those are things that I think the team, we still haven't played, I think, our best lineup in our best situation. Um, and that's going to take some time with chemistry as well to try to figure that out. So uh, I have a vision in my head of where I think we can get to. I think we could be a pretty good volleyball team by the end of the year. I think we got a long way to go. and. Um, you know, I tell them all the time they got boyfriends and family to tell them how great they are. My job's to remind them that we got a whole bunch of stuff to do and we got to get better. And you know, there wasn't a bunch of celebrating by me after. I think it's they were probably shocked, especially the kids that have been around. But, you know, it's dancing in the locker room and doing all kinds of stuff in week three is is uh, not my ammo. You know, I've been fortunate enough to win the whole thing a couple times, and those are pretty fun nights at the end of it. But um, we got a whole bunch of season left, and we got some got some stuff we got to really work on. Emily, were you shocked that you didn't celebrate that much? Not really. I've heard from the girls what type of coach he is, and I kind of liked it because it shows us that we still have so much more to work on and focus on getting better at. You play in the toughest conference, obviously, for women's volleyball in the Big Ten. Playing some of these Power Five schools that you played and now beat, just how much confidence does that give you guys going into this project step you get coming up? Um, it gives us a lot of confidence, but it also pushes us to getting better and focusing on scouting reports and learning about the teams that we're going to come against and putting our best lineups out there to compete with them. So when, you, when you see teams like Penn State this weekend, I mean, they're facing Stanford and Oregon. I mean, when you see those top programs giving themselves tough schedules, does that motivate you more to make sure your preseason schedules are like what you're at least trying to do this year? Yeah. I, it comes back to, I think, the kind of kid that we want to come to Indiana. You know, I think, you know, Emily was recruited by the top schools in the country. She wants to play against the best. And, you know, I think that's why kids like to play in the Big Ten. I think, I hope that's why kids want to come to Indiana now is because you get that opportunity. Um, there's some elite volleyball going on. We're not there yet, but there's some stuff that you watch on TV. It gets your attention, you know, and, and, we, and we play them. I mean, we play, we go to Tampa this weekend, but we're opening in Minnesota, Wisconsin. We come home and play Illinois. You know, it's three of the top five or six teams in the country, three matches in a row. Um, you know, and we're not we're not top ten good. We're not top fifteen good. I think we're a good volleyball team, but we got a whole bunch of stuff we got to cross off before we can play those teams and uh, start to get cocky with anything. You know, coach, you mentioned trying to get the best players to come here. How much is the new facility? I know it's early, but how much has that kind of been a shot in the arm for your recruiting? I think it's great, and um, it said two things to me. One was just the fact that it, they got it done. And that the people were generous enough, you know, the Jay Wilkinsons of the world to donate and, and help the volleyball program. I think the geography was another statement too, though. You know, I think volleyball, being off campus, tough to get to for students, tough to get to for people. Uh, you know, putting it where it is, right kind of in the heart of campus, right by basketball, right by Assembly Hall. Uh, for me, it was just a statement that it matters. You know, it was a huge part of the reason I ended up taking the job, a huge reason why I'm here and my staff's here. Uh, and I think Emily would tell you that the players, it's such a luxury to be able to train and, and spend every day in a facility like that. We're recruiting eighth and ninth grade players. You know, that's the, that's the trying to identify the youngest, best kids in the country. So our first recruiting class won't get here until 2020. Um, I think that's our first full recruiting class. I think it's going to be one of the best in program history, which is the good news. And we hope to keep building off of that into the future. And it, it's a huge part of the equation. What does it traditionally take for a Big Ten team to end up with a tournament berth at the end of the year? Depends. You know, there's been years. I've been in uh, the Big Ten since 97. I played at Penn State and got into coaching there. It's In the 20 years I've been around it, uh, there's been, you know, usually seven or eight teams uh, from the Big Ten go. There's been as many as eight or nine. Uh, this has been a wild preseason. A lot of the top Big Ten teams have some losses early in the year, but that's because the parity is getting great. So, you know, again, if you're good enough to make the tournament, you do. Uh, I think you've got to go play people. Your RPI has to be good. You've got to do a good job in the conference. And um, there's been very rare instances in the conference where people win, you know, seven, eight, nine matches and are able to advance if their RPI is great. But you've got 20 opportunities in the Big Ten to play really good teams. If you win more than you lose, you're going to end up in the tournament.